today we're going to talk about people platform. Before I start, have you see my new T-shirt? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah very, it's very nice. All ready, all ready for the conference. So um, when, when will I get mine in the post? Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah, they, they'll, oh, we need to get them distributed out. So that's my fault. So um, be, be with you in the next couple of days, hopefully. So, Rich, I want to talk to you about people platform. Um, it's a it's a thing that people have been asking us about. Unit four have been talking about people platform for the last few months. We've had a number of our clients come back to us and ask us what people platform was. We've had people asking, is people platform a new product? Is people platform a new marketing ploy? And actually, the more we're looking at this now, people platforms. Actually, I want to ask you to tell me what people platform is, but rather than me sort of jumping in. Yeah, sure thing. I mean, I will agree with you. The whole the word people platform has been thrown around for the last four or five years as well as other words such as wonder and you know the experiences and stuff and it is very confusing i would say um it's taken me a while to sort of get my head around it personally uh but from my i, I think I've, I've worked it out and the easiest way to describe it is to describe the people platform as a as an ecosystem or better yet as a, as a, a, a collection of products and services that will be uh, available for unit four users and anyone who uses a unit four application so not just unit four business world but maybe the uh the other products such as the the, you know, the sort of the training and the sort of the yeah. applicant management system uh it the whole purpose of it is to sort of uh to, is, 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 is new, obviously it's a new service offering but it's it's, it's there to enable the a swift transition from a monolithic to a microservice based environment. Uh, now, in the past, the, the words monolithic, it sort of implies like you have one application where you sort of log into it and you do all your activities. So you raise your timesheets, your requisitions, you check on the general ledger inquiries and so on like that. Whereas a microservice based sort of eco, uh, construct is you sort of have a single application which services one thing so like a, a single application you log in to to do just your acquisitions um now the whole people platform comprises of multiple elements uh you've got the identity services uh which allows you to have single sign-on experiences and integration with providers such as office 365 which i do want to show that because it is such a nifty thing uh you've got message hub which is a little bit technical so i'm gonna sort of just glaze over that and not put too much details uh wanda which is again another one of those sort of what i originally thought was a bit of a marketing gimmick but uh, over the last four or five years but it's proven itself to be very good extension kits and integration kits uh they all could work together in sort of unison uh, to provide uh provide solutions for complex business requirements uh, and the, the main point, is, the, other, the, other, the other point is, it's going to be available for uh, on-site hosted uh, customers as well as Unit Four cloud providers. Okay, that's great because we were led to, one, led to believe at one point this is only SaaS, but if it's if it's on-site as well, that gives more flexibility. But anyway, let's move on. Uh, so, so it's one of the things I'm more of rather than um, tell me about it, show me. So I'm sure you're going to do that, and it will stick with me. Yes. This is a unit four diagram, which I'm sure you'll talk to. Yes, uh, there's a lot of information on there. Um, it's it's kind of complicated, uh, but really the whole point is what it's trying to demonstrate is at the bottom, you've got the, the various unit four applications like HCM, unit four ERP, FPNA, student management. Uh, You've got external applications in the far right, and the whole thing which ties everything together is the unit four people platform. Everything exists within this this sort of microcosm of services, this ecosystem. Okay, so let's let's do the test. So, identity service. I'm going to give you thirty seconds to tell me about identity service, and then we'll 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 see it in action. Okay, so identity services. It allows. A, a, it's just a really great concept where for all these applications that exist within the ecosystem, or uh, everyone will be able to log in using the same set of credentials, and that can be provided by various sort of providers such as Azure, Office 365, uh, or some OpenID, which is AD integration. 
it, it's it's such a, it is a major game changer a uh, game changer because in the past it's sort of been the case of you've always had to have a, a you know business world credentials and have this working seamless especially especially in a sort of remote working environment it just makes it such a, a such a boon to the business yeah no i mean we're going to show so in a bit but for where I come from, from a from a user audit perspective, it's always been a bit of a CIO headache. Uh, so you know, CIOs can actually sleep easy at night now, knowing, knowing that Unit Four, from a Unit Four application perspective, they're not going to have the risk of um, user audits. But actually, let, let's demonstrate that, and that'll probably sort of come into play. So this is a slide that Richard put together, and I think this is. Um, this really brings Unit 4 application to the 21st century, working in units with things like Microsoft, Microsoft 365. So this slide is basically demonstrating someone logging in, or Richard logging in to his 365 account, and that's launching Unit 4 ERP. Um, because that was, wasn't possible before, that was, that was two sort of sets of authorizations, and even single sign-on was single sign-on of an AD account. This is all through 365, sort of externally hosted. Um, it is keeps, a massive game changer. It, it, massive, it, yeah, it yeah. brings Unit 4 right up to date. And this yeah. is, I, I, I strongly recommend that as many organizations try to incorporate this as, as, as quickly as possible because no more password resets, strong pa uh, password uh, network, you know, compliance. You, you, you comply with your IT policies. It, it's, yeah. it's phenomenally. It is amazing. Yeah. So, Rich, that IDS thing, I think that, again, as you said, that, that's a game changer. And this is something that's, as I know you mentioned this at the sort of start of the, the call, we talked about Wonder and is Wonder a gimmick? And actually, the more and more I'm seeing of it, it's actually not a gimmick and it's probably got a lot of real life use. I mean, I, I use my Apple iPhone for Siri. Um, I'm starting to get used to it now, even at my age. But if I take my young kids, they use, you know, they don't they don't sort of input into the phone anymore. They use Siri for absolutely everything. Um, we got an Amazon Echo at home, um, and uh, you know, Alexa's our sort of second best friend at home. Oh, don't ever say that word on a recording, <laughs> because uh, everyone everyone's probably having their Alexa talk to them right now. <laughs> Alexa, no, she's not. <laughs> Yeah, she's not listening. Don't worry, no one wait. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no one listens to me anyway. That's a, that's another shaggy dog story. So, Rich, tell me about Wonder and um, yeah, what you th what, you, what you think it sort of where really it sits from a, well, from a technical perspective. Well, that's the thing. I mean, the last four or five years, I'll be the first one to admit I've always rolled my eyes like, oh god, they're going to show us Wonder again at the conferences, and oh, when's that going to be? You know, I always put it as a bit of like paperware, like it's never going to come around. Um, but having hands-on exposure to it this year has has sort of opened my eyes to what it can do. Uh, I don't see it replacing for heavy users. I don't really see it becoming like a, a first point of call. But it, again, this is the whole paradigm shift where we're moving towards microservices. You now have got people being requested to act upon requests of information, a respond to an you know action or request rather than sort of log into an application. And Wonder is is a, a fantastic uh, application which sits in Teams, which allows you to sort of do very simple tasks and sort of yeah. in, in, inter in, interact with, with simple natural languages. Uh, it's got, you know, it works with quite a few uh, sort of chat programs, including Slack, Skype, Teams and Messenger. Um, and it has quite a lot of good features and I hope to see a lot of new features as well in the yeah. future. So I know you put together some slide packs here. So here's, oh, this is this is this is a game you sort of turning over, isn't it? Oh um, yes, I, I had to throw something uh, from my childhood in. So uh, um, text adventures, you know, we, the idea here is just trying to demonstrate that the whole concept of using natural language, whilst integrate uh, whilst communicating with computers, has been a desire for a very long time. In the old days, you, we used to have to write. You, know, you have to write things very low level, and you, you yeah. sort of get away from the complexity. But uh, to actually have the ability to interact uh, and have a conversation with uh, an AI or an application is the next level, and it's where the whole microservices is going to be coming on in the future. So, who needs real friends in the future? Right? <laughs> 
So I do like this one. I know you tried to demonstrate here. Actually, we'll play this video and you can talk to it. So let me just walk you through. So this is just a little demo we got of uh, us setting up Wanda for Teams and how simple it can be to set up. So we go to the, the Microsoft Teams, search the app Wanda, and we install it. And this immediately, Wanda is now usable from your application. Uh, you still have to log in and ver uh, certify your credentials afterwards yeah. using the sign-in functionality, but you can see how quick it was for us to get it all up and running. And for an end user who is an infrequent user of Aggresso, uh, of Unit 4 ERP, yeah. I should say, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is this can help them get used to having to, you know, approve a timesheet or making simple requests. So I can see a lot. I can see a lot of benefits for light users of business world using Wanda instead of going to the web to do an action. And and this is a good example of Internet of Things. So here we got um, uh, a chat function in in its simplest form, powered by Unit Four ERP. This person is doing some simple requests. They've not had to be trained on the application, um, but they're still functioning. They're still approving. They're still requesting. Um, all through Microsoft Teams. That's it's yeah, it's, definitely a game changer. Well, especially, it's a very good point. The fact that um, you know when a new person joins the organisation, they probably use Teams or the chat application, or at the very least, will be trained to use Microsoft Teams or Skype or whatever. And so therefore, it's the same interface they're used to it. They, they know that, oh, something's pinged up to me. I need to respond to it. So and especially again, the whole remote working future that it will, it will be going down, this integrates really nicely that approach. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So the only thing that's missing from this is um, some kind of a, uh, a microphone function to actually sort of say, want to do something for me. So that's that's. I know they've tried a few things before by integrating via an Alexa app, but that's got to be that's probably version 2.0. <laughs> Again, this is over the next decade. We're we're talking about Unifor. The paradigm shift is moving towards microservices. Over the next 10 years, I would see this becoming more and more uh, intelligent and sort of learning behavior, like behavior pattern learning. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, fully. Yeah. So, Rich, we've done Wanda. We've done IDS. The, um, the 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 next one is extension kit, and actually, I think what we're going to do here is um, you've been promising to show show me this is integrating or actually connecting what was a supply standard supplier master file with the company's house register for yes. address validation. So really, what I want to do here is demonstrate it in action, and then show you very quickly how we built it. Um, because a live demonstration paints a lot more uh, than you know loads of loads of slides and screenshots. Having someone show you walking around the application is always a lot better. So let me show it to you now. Over to you, Rich. So uh, I'm going to demonstrate uh, the extension toolkit and in, uh, in particular the um, uh, the integration that we've set up for Company House. Now for our non UK users, uh, Company House is a registry of all the companies that exist within the United Kingdom and incorporated inside the United Kingdom. Uh, it holds the addresses, uh, filing information and quite a lot of information. So uh, here we have the, uh, I, I pulled up the company page for uh, Equidix uh, Healthcare. Uh, we've got the addresses, company registration number and so. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to log into Business World using IDS. You can't stop. You can't help yourself now, can you, Rich? Uh, I'm a convert now. I'm going to load up the supplier master file. So, and this is our uh, our company here. Yeah. So, what what our extension that we've created it does is uh, at the moment, the name and the address is set to the value which is for Equidix. The way what we've done the extension kit to do what we what we decided to do was. Based on the company registration number, yeah. it will update the supplier name and the address. Right. And that's post save. Uh, this is really good for auditors because all you've got to do now is just ensure the company registration number is, is populated 
and all the rest of it is sort of taken care of. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change this number from Equitix to the one used for Unit 4. I'm going to press Save. Then I'm going to start, I'm going to type in that number again. And you see how fast that changed? Right. Change has occurred. You see how fast that same number is now says Unit 4 Business Software Limits Limited. Yeah. And the address has been changed to the one in Reading. Uh, I will make an observation that the uh, the cache data still shows Equitix, but this is standard Unit 4 functionality. And if I was to change the software name, uh, the supplier name, the same issue would occur. This, well, is, yeah. this is just a, an issue with caching, but the main record in the database has been updated. And we saw how fast that was. Uh, again, changing that number back to the old one, like that. So what I want to show now is just the integration with Wanda and the extension kit. So I'm just saying, uh, I just signed the extension kit to as soon as it's made the change for it to contact the person who made the change and to say, uh, hi, uh, for supplier ID, uh, I saw that this is a UK company, so I changed the supplier name from Equitix to Unit 4 Business Software and changed the address from Sevendale House to yeah. Suite 201, regard to Wanda. And again, because I did it twice, it flashed back and forth. So I just want to show you how fast this is, because I, I'm really impressed at the speed and the how fast it does this. Uh, so I'm just going to put this back to the other one. I'm going to press save. Uh, just going to clean up fresh uh, copy bit. So it's currently set to Equitix. And press save. And let's watch how fast that does this. Okay, so we've got a new message real time, haven't we? Really quickly. It was, it was, it was, it's, it's so responsive. I mean, that was like two seconds delay, about two yeah. or three seconds. Um, and it's, it fires me. So you, 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 the really nice thing about this is you can configure the extension kit. We've just done it so one just says, I've done this, but you could actually configure one to just say, I noticed there's a difference. Do you do want me to go and change this for you and fix this, this mistake? And then you can respond with, a pre set of lists of actions like yes or no. So you can say yes or no. We haven't configured it to do that. We just wanted to keep it really tight, but you can, there's so much flexibility you can do with the extension kit that is going over the next year or two, it's going to be phenomenal the amount of things that we can build with it. Uh, so the next part of my demonstration is I want to show you the extension kit. Pick my IDS account. And uh, just say signed in for now. So, nice thing about uh, you know the extension kit. First of all, is the fact that it's, they they are rapidly uh, developing, and every month they have a new update to it. And it the small sort of little fixes and tweaks. It's, it's more in line with modern software development. And this is because it's a microservice, where as the old style was uh, monolithic, you couldn't really if you did an update, all the co code is very ar uh, archaic and very labor intensive to maintain, but in a microservice environment, you can have rapid deployment of new versions. And so with the move to this, we're going to be seeing a lot of new functionality and releases. So let's just jump in and find the one that I was working with. So this is my company, supplier company of the house one I integrated. And the first, when we load it up, we are confronted with the flow. Um, so and I can see the history of what happened. I can sort of see what happened. You know, the one I, I just did like a few minutes ago ran for four seconds. And I can see all the metadata around it. Uh, so to start with, the entry point is uh, it, it's responding to a, a modification to the supplier document, either a creation or a modification. And then it filters it out and says, I'm going to filter based on the country code being uh, the British one. And the, other, the person last updated was me. You, you, I've just done it so that it only acts upon my one. And it also filters on to make sure the company registration number is populated. Uh, once it does that, it does an internal call 
using the the internal business world uh, REST API services. Uh, there's a lot of complexity around REST API uh, functionality, but you know, it's one of the sort of things you have when you start getting to extension kit, you get exposure to it and you can sort of start working it out. Uh, this retrieves the, the person who the email address of the person who last updated it, which is in my, my case, then uses the resolver to get the uh, the, the wonder of connection. And then it calls the company house uh, APIs with a registration number. And off the back of that, it does a REST API patch call using the data coming from the company house. And finally, it pushes out uh, to the uh, to the wonder to say, well, so see, I've, I've, it's, got, it's using all the data sets from the previous. So it's, it is really, really impressive what they built. And I think really uh, the way I would summarize extension kit is, is it's pretty much Intel agent on steroids. <laughs> that, that is what it is. It's responding to an offense and doing reacting to it. But this time it can actually go external to just the business world application. Yeah, so so the limitation really on this is is the data that's available. So in other words, we, we looked at a company's house. Um, we know HMRC have kind of got hooks into uh, from you know, from, a, from a data flow perspective or, or big data. Uh, we know people at Equifax are doing similar things. So again, limitation. Am I right? Would I be right in saying that, Rich? It's just where we can get the data from. That's it. I mean, this only works because Company House has an API. If the yeah. external offender does not have an API, there's no way to access it. But this goes back to the whole Internet of Things. Yeah. And this is this concept has been around for the last 15, 20 years. Uh, it's just it's nice to sort of see it finally be introduced and use in a uh, have a way to use it properly without having to code things. Uh, because the old way you'd have to do this in business world and uh, ERP unit for ERP would be to write customization extension yeah. and program it that way. But now we can just configure it all using the flows, the extension kits, set it all up, get the information then patch it back into business world using the REST APIs, which comes as standards of all part of business world uh, implementations. So again, this is just trying to demonstrate how the people platform and the extension kit as a service sits on top of everything in the unit for is, uh, business world, respond, reacts to offense in the message hub, and then acts upon it and makes calls. So we can actually do really interesting things like updating multiple systems, be it, be it from a unit four application uh, or an external provider. So would you say the way it's created, this is a, this could potentially be a user tool? Yes, uh, so this could actually be exported out and set up on any any person who has the extension to, uh, kit uh, yeah. as a service. Uh, so they can be set up individually or end users will be able to, uh, organization will be able to create their own ones get a consultant to create it for them or subscribe to predefined ones, uh, which will be available on the uh, Uniform Marketplace. Yeah, no, this is great. And again, it's it's a game changer in the fact that, yes, someone like ACT, as you said, it, it takes a lot of programming. It's not never been a user at all, but with a flow like this, I get it takes, it's going to take people to get their heads around it, but it there's a construct there, there's steps. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's like a it's like a workflow if you think about it like you got yeah. steps one to five and the really nice thing is about this is it's platform independent so just because you upgraded business world doesn't mean that this will stop working yeah. because this is the force from the platform uh, of, the, of the software it sits beyond that concept and that's why they are able to have more you know regular updates to this without breaking uh, having compatibility issues so yeah, Rich, that was that was great. And again, as you said, so I think I, I I'm going to come up with some ideas. But where do you think we can use extension kit further than just the supplier master file that you demonstrated? Well, uh, at the moment, uh, the extension kit is it's it has been around for a while, but it's still it's been beta, and it's only recently uh, this month, in fact, is going to become available to the public as a whole. Uh, at the moment, it has quite a few fa uh, functions and activities it can do, such as sending out messages, emails, and questions to Wander. It can create new events in the message hub, and it can, it, uh, it can also call external and internal APIs. 
uh, as well as receive like uh, HTTP uh, webhooks. So an end user could click on an item, uh, click on a link, and it will activate the extension kit yep. uh, flow. Um, at the moment, we have identified and we're working on several products. Uh, the first one, as you saw, was the uh, the Spire and Customer Mast file uh, integration with uh, with uh, Company House. But we're also looking at integration of Google Forms with various mass files and the, the form functionality in, in business world. Um, as you probably know, in order for an end user to uh, create a form, you need to log into business world. And sometimes yeah. it's not appropriate for every user to have a, a login. So integration of Google Forms, where they can go into a Google Form link, uh, enter the details, and suddenly that appears in business world in the form administration and is workflowable is a real big game changer because it allows you to cut down the license of all the right. end users who are on the system. And we're also looking at, uh, we've actually created a few examples of uh, sending out a calendar invite using the, uh, the, the Microsoft Graph API concept. So when an end user, when a resource is scheduled to be on uh, like an event such as annual leave training or project work, for example, it will automatically generate a, uh, a calendar invite for the, for the Outlook, which right. I think is going to be a, a real good thing because they, there isn't any native support out of the box for that without using People Planner and that kind of stuff. So to have that generating the calendar Outlook invite means you're going to be cutting down people, missing appointments and missing the training courses and it's just going to be so much labor and uh, save so much labor, time and effort. Yeah, because so, you mentioned Google Forms, but it's not just Google Forms, isn't it? So I'm just thinking we're doing some work with Microsoft Forms at the moment. Yeah. So yeah, any any kind of Forms integration. Well, that goes into the whole Graph API of Microsoft. So that that will be easily achievable. And we'll add it to our list. Add it to the list because I've got some ideas already for you, Rich. <laughs> okay, and then you wanted to talk about the interface kit. So the interface kit will be coming. Uh, we asked Unit Four sort of uh, mentioned uh, quarter one uh, next year. Um, it might be a bit longer, but it, it's still in beta mode at the moment. And the idea is it works. It complements the functionality of extension kits. Um, so, uh, the idea is more about creating proper interface between systems, multiple systems. Uh, uh, it, it's really good because uh, from what I've seen of it, it allows you to sort of validate, map and transform data and, uh, and allows you to handle things like XML, SFTP okay. and REST API. So it allows real good tight integration of, of systems and feeding data back and forth. Like, again, this goes back to the whole internet of things and sort of connecting systems. And the validation is done within the, within the interface kit? In, inside the interface kit. Interface kit. So instead of having to wait like a, you know, the end of the day for your flat files to be pushed across, you can have real time information polling within like, you know, within up to up to up to real time information being pushed back and forth between systems. Yeah, no, no. And then the thing I see where this is, um, this is a game changer. I know we use that term a few times, but the validation is done with the interface kit. So we're not having to pull GL files back into the application yes. only for them to fail. That's it. Because the old days, we, we've all we've all done it so many times. We we had a flat file and it falls over, and then you got to reverse the steps right. back so, and yeah, work yeah. it out. And this will change a lot of things. And it, it's it's because it's sort of unit four centric in its nature. It's just going to save so much time and development and costs whilst creating interfaces. Yeah. Gone are the days of sort of sitting in an office till sort of late at night trying to uh, load through sort of big journal files. Oh yes, customer so, loads, supplier loads. Oh yes. Say, we're saying that are we ever going to get into an office again? But that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there's one screenshot of the, of the interface kit which I can I can show uh, integration kits which I can show. Um, but we'll be having more information. Uh, of this as it I guess as it's officially released. Um, again, just like uh, the extension kit, customers will be able to, uh, customers and partners and unit will be able to create them and also create a standardized solution which people customers can subscribe to. Uh, this this is really good because it means that you can have a standard like 
you can have a, a standard interface which is created from one system, a, a common system to unit four. So I put, I, I've got a, 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 a slide from unit four, which sort of shows you when you should be using the extension right. kit and the integration kit. I'm, I'm, there's a lot of information there to go through and digest. I'm not going to go through this. If you want to watch this in your own time, just pause the video, have a read of that, and then you can uh, have a feel of where, when to use one or the other. I think, Rich, we, we need to get something out um, to the user base once we've got access to integration kits. Um, and I, I, I'm going to suggest that we get uh, a video out there showing people how integration oh. kits can be used in real time, like we do with the extension Definitely. kits, because that's when it really comes to its form. But um, I like the theory, but I want to see in practice. Well, we should hopefully have spring for November. OK. <clears throat> and that's November 2020. That's right. Yeah, yeah. OK. So. We've shown some interesting things. Um, so we've gone through uh, IDS. I think that that's. That I think is 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 a and again, I'm not going to use the word game changer, but it does sort of bring the security all into one um, sort of place. We've gone through Wanda, uh, and we can say, and I think the, the the where Wanda comes into its own is into the whole Internet of Things. The fact that we've shown Wanda integrating with um, light applications such as Teams. So most, you know, I wouldn't even sort of use the 80-20 rule, but most of the population of, of a, an application like Unit 4 ERP is going to be light users and Wanda through Teams may be more than they need. And I do like what you did show, Rich, was actually the quick setting up of Wanda through Teams. And if anybody's missed that, please go back and look at that video. Um, that was done in real time. Um, just to show you how it is it easy to bring those things together. I like the extension kits and a demonstration for the supply master file and the fact that we can take things out so we can bring in um, things like Microsoft Forms. Um, so that opens up a quite quite a lot of opportunities. Um, so yeah, I think there's there's a, there's a lot with this people platform. Have I missed anything, Rich? Uh, I think you've covered it quite well there. Uh, I mean, I think the main point we're, we're trying to say is, you know, this is relatively new technology, but it will be over the next year or two, I could see this developing and becoming very, very mainstream. Uh, and obviously, uh, as a partner organisation, we will be uh, supporting people, the uh, implementation deployment of people platform, and we'll, we'll be available to help with consultancy, in in many fan, uh, many manners, such as sort of either setting up, helping you get people platforms set up, setting up the IDS, or just helping you with the extension kits, and integration yep. kits. So, yeah, just uh, just I guess just contact us. Yeah. So so during the conference, we're on the XVU booth. So um, please reach out to us. Um, we will make these videos because I think they they they're, they're actually really informative. We will put these onto our YouTube and sort of blog channels. So. Um, you know, please find out. Please, please reach out to us. Okay. Thank you both, Rich. Thank you, uh, Thank you. Jack. And um, see you on the other side. See you later. Thank you. Cheers, Bye. Bye. Bye.